Hello and welcome to another Punter's Guide. This weekend we're focusing on the ITV action at York, at Sandown and at Chester as well. Hopefully the sun will be shining, the crowds will be out plenty ahead, of course, of Royal Ascot. Look forward to next week, Jason Weaver, alongside me now. Andy will be with us, of course, those five days of the Royal Meeting. And uh, an opportunity, Jason, to try and uh, boost the betting bank. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's sort of... Uh... A, a wide selection. We've got some class in there. Um, we've got some some decent sprinters uh, and obviously one or two improvers. But um, yeah, it's a busy old Saturday. The sun will be out and hopefully everybody enjoying the racing and we get set for the platinum, obviously, Jubilee Royal Ascot. Great, great racing. Yeah, cannot wait for that, of course. Well, let's get some winners then this week. Uh, start off at Sandown, the 140. It's a mile one uh, contest, a handicap, that intermediate trip between a mile and uh, 10 furlongs, but it's a stiff nine, isn't it, Sandown? Yeah, it's got a, a lovely rise up towards the line. The horses tend to let themselves down fully there because you're just slightly on the collar, a little bit like you on that treadmill when you're pounding away, just putting that gradient up a, a little bit sometimes. Uh, now, as far as the these are concerned, we've got some big improvers, haven't we? The likes of v Site. um, who's up in trip on handicap debut, comes from a real good family, closely related to Scope, who's a possibility for the Gold Cup, depending on what rain we have, obviously with Trushan thrown in there as well. But he's got a real good pedigree. Rudimental um, ha Hamaki, who goes for William Haggis, has not only been gelded, he's also had the wind operation as well. So I'm fascinated to see which way he goes in the market. And a couple of improvers. However... Night of luxury. We haven't heard a lot this season, have we, of Saeed bin Sarur? But this lad was a ready winner at Leicester last time. He's only been put up the three pound. That was after an unsuccessful stint back in Maidan, home territory, if you like, for, for Saeed. But he was still green, babyish. He hit the line strong. For me, he's worth much, much more than the three pound he was raised up. And uh, night of luxury, something that... Um, we're hoping for next week. <laughs> Fingers crossed, that's for sure. Yeah, so hopefully he goes off to a winning start uh, night of luxury. Head over to York then uh, for their first of the afternoon. And it is the uh, the Queen Mother Cup, isn't it, for female amateur riders. I don't know if you still did. You used to win the weight in champagne. Maybe get me and you on the scales. We win plenty. Oh, <laughs> please get the pair of us together with also lead wedged down our boots. It's one of the funniest sights. You get the winning rider... So you get one of the ladies to come out and they could be absolutely tiny and they've just carried a big weight, 11 stone, four, I think is the top weight in the race. And you see them come out and then all of a sudden the, the bottles and bottles and cases of champagne go on because the girls have got lead wedged everywhere to make them that little bit heavier. So, yeah, look, it's a it's a great little race, the Queen Mother's Cup. Um, obviously, Francesca Kamani, um, she... Uh, was a winner of this on a few occasions, and her mother, Sarah. So it's a great race. And I think that a filly or a mare who's done as a good turn the last twice, top anticipation, will probably go in again. She's been put up six. Um, you know, I'm clutching at straws if I think that Throne Hall, who's starting to look well, handicapped, can turn up because he's becoming a bit um, disappointing. King of the Midlands, very, very keen. He's not the easiest to handle. So Molly Landau is going to have her hands full on the way round. Will he last out? I think he'll make a good effort of it. But um, top anticipation to pick them up. Well, then top anticipation then uh, in the Queen Mother Cup. And uh, best of luck to Becky Smith as well, trying to get the uh, champagne uh, on ice later on that night. Right, back to Sandown there. We've got a mile handicap at uh, 2.15. And uh, I know one that we've picked up on a few times, a VS serendipity eye catch with young Harry Davis booked here for the ride. Yeah, he's he's not an easy conveyance from A to B. Um, he's much better when he's held up off a really strong gallop. He's previously won this contest before, so he's in the right spot. The trainer had his first juvenile winner a couple of days ago, so the team are in fairly good order. He's got to be respected, but he will be punted. That's key, isn't it? You know, Harry Davis, Benoit de la Sayre, everything that they ride at the moment is punted. Uzo put up a really good performance on his first start for the team. Second run for Jamie Osborne, respected. Sheer rocks we don't know about. And we've got a horse who was over, I think it was in Ireland, went to Hong Kong, showed nothing, came back over. He's now flying along. That's encouraged for James Fanshawe, but he's switching from the all-weather onto the turf, my worry. Now, 
Have a look at Arthur's realm when he ran last time at Epsom. He was 40 to 1 on that occasion. I'm going to put him up as an each way selection. He got chopped off early on there, was out the back. And I think it was like the jockey looked up, realised that he wasn't going to win. And he wasn't left to coast on, but he came home hands and heels without ever really threatening the front group, if you like. So he was mid division. The team cannot stop having winners. And um, Paul Turner, the owner, I think he's up to 14 or 15 so far, all of them for Ed Dunlop this season. Arthur's Realm is a massive each way price with Kirby booked. Interesting, yeah, I like to hear one at a price then, Arthur's Dream uh, there at Sandown. Back to the Knaves, my then. We've got a seven field line handicap at 2.35. Uh, Usually the draw can be uh, quite effective over this trip, but a smaller field, nine of them, and plenty of course specials or regulars at the track in this contest. Yeah, this is, a, this is a good good little race, this, and some real specialists, as you mentioned. I mean, Boardman um, is a seven furlong specialist, and um, he's been he's been mopping up recently. He looked really, really good, winning off 95. Um, he's up to 99 today. Um, May Wake, who's gone for the four-timer, was on a massive improve last year, and that's the new combination. Oshin Orr and Richard Fahey, one to keep a, a, a close eye on. And Chalet has got a great record here, all its runs at York. I think two wins, two thirds. So the form figures are very strong. However, Lion Tower has been running over the wrong trip the last twice and has very nearly managed to hold on. Second in two big fields over the mile. He doesn't quite get it. The best thing about him is he's not one dimensional as regards tactics. They can go forward, they can drop him in. So he's not pace dependent, whichever way the race unfolds. Seven furlongs. Absolutely hits the button with him, Lion Tower. We are then Lion Tower, yes. So do decent efforts, as you mentioned, at the track. Hopefully, third time lucky this season. Back to Sandown, then this will be over in a flash, won't it? The Scurry Stakes. A, a small field might be a little bit disappointing turnout. Carl Burke's got a third of the field with a pair of runners, but the market very much latched on uh, to Kachora, who you'd imagine on his two year old form has leading claims. Yeah, he's, he's fascinating. I mean, living the dream. Didn't run too bad at Epsom the other day in the dash. He sort of pinged out the lids, managed to get to the fence, but he was readily overtaken by the, the winner. Completely different five here, which may well suit him, and he could he could show us um, a little bit better form. But he's not the class, is he, of a Katura. Um Now, he was a very good juvenile. I found it interesting that Adam Kirby chose to him chose him instead of Wings of War when they ran, ran up in the Sandy Lane the other day behind El Caballo. That form is very strong. He got a little bit of a pinch and a squeeze late on towards the line. It could be a, could be a good afternoon for the old bump and kick Kirby because um, Katura does look the class, despite he's got to give away that £5 penalty um, for a patent success last term. However, he is the class. Yeah, he certainly is. Couture then in the scurry stakes. Back up to the names well, then from the sprinters to the stayers. We've got the Grand Cup over the Ebor track and trip uh, here as well. And, uh, well, without a fight, it's interesting. Well, you mentioned Scope a little earlier, Gold Cup bound. Without a fight, finish just behind him at Newbury. Yeah, that, that um, for me is um, pretty decent form without a fight. Um, look, Hugh and Glenn has been a super old performer, hasn't he? An absolute veteran star for, for Jim Goldie and the team. John Leeper has threatened to be a very, very good horse, but it's never really quite happened for him. Interested to see how Ryan gets on. Um, Kamari, we saw him winning at the Royal Meeting. Mandu probably put up a, an improved performance when we saw him last time at Ascot, but without a fight has got form behind Shahera, who runs in the, the Prince of Wales next week. Now he's dominated in small fields. That's key with him, isn't it? So you'd be thinking, right, well, maybe he'll go and dominate today. I think there's a bit of pace in here. Mandu Kamari are both wanting to go forward. I think because he's unexposed at the trip, there's a possibility he could be the quickest in this particular lineup. So I'm hoping they ride him a bit different. Just give him a chance. Look, I'm not asking to drop him in miles, but there surely won't be too far between first and last anyway with six runners. But he could just have too much kick for these late on. Yeah, well, that's the Grand Cup at uh, your from one Roman city to another. Though we head to the Rudy of Chester for a single race in front of the ITV cameras on Saturday. Uh, this 320s, so it's quite a big field for Chester. Of course, it's over the seven and a half furlongs. It's a little bit of a run, isn't it? About a furlong to the first turn. Looks wide open though. Outgate's got top weight, and his form in handicaps this season starting to look pretty strong. 
Yeah, um, lots of these tie in with each other, don't they? Um, you know, Outgate, Spirit Catcher. Um, Spirit Catcher is actually a half brother to the Pre Labbe when a whiz kid. Major disappointing um, last time behind Outgate when they were both um, beaten up at Haydock last time. Um, I mean, Point Linus, I want to give him a little bit of a squeak. He's got some excellent placed effort last year and some very, very good races. Um, Thunder Legend will be popular off the back of a big run. He was drawn out in 11 at Haydock and he managed to show enough dash to get over cross and clear. And then he was run down by Jimi Hendrix um, late in the day. Again, it's not ideal because he's drawn in 11, but you said it at the top of that introduction there. It's at the top spur, the seven and a half furlongs at Chester. So they have a run down along by the side of the, the railway line and a chance to get over and clear. So we all, all have been following him off the edge of a cliff over six furlongs so far in the early part of the season. And he's threatened on a few occasions and cost a lot of people a lot of money. However, just a bit of an eye catcher over slightly shorter than this last time, seven furlongs at Epsom. Well worth a try at the seven and a half around here. I think it will suit him. So uh, Pocket the Profit is an each way player. Night of luxury, pocket the profit. They're all names we want to be doing this weekend. How about the 340 at York, though, Jason? I'll give you a couple of stabs here. 19 three-year-olds down the six furlongs of the Knavesmire. This is a very tricky punter's puzzle. Oh, it's an absolute nightmare, isn't it? it keep, every time I was going through, it keeps saying that Tim Easterby's got such a good record um, in this particular contest. And I suppose Roach Power is an easy way to start. He's actually a half-brother to Art Power who's a very good sprinter for the team. Uh, you know, I think he'll probably be short. Gisburn, his form ties in with Devast um, down the bottom. Um, Bay Breeze gelded um, him in the winter. That's definitely done the trick. Two wins as far as he is concerned. An old favourite of mine runs in here, though. Vintage Clarets for Richard Fahey. Now, he's, he, he was close up in a Coventry. Um, he's not had much opportunity to show what he can do so far. He ran in a an all-age sprint down over course and distance last time, was bang there until the furlong marker and fell in a hole. But again, they went forward with him. Change of jockey. Hopefully they'll drop him in. I think he's the wrong price. Um, one who's drawn close to him, I'll keep an eye on as well, is Edward Cornelius, who ran up in the sandy lane. He probably went too quick and just weakened out of it late on. It's not like um Keith Dalgleish to to run one or throw one in that sort of race unless he thinks they've got a bit of quality so Edward Cornelius back in a handicap he's going that way I hope the vintage Clarets who's dropped a long way down the handicap they're both sort of each way prices there we are then two against the field they're all of the trickiest uh, puzzle to solve of the day what would be the idea of, of the strongest bet on the cards this weekend I think it's Lion Tower. Um, I know that he's in against a, a bunch of other seven furlong specialists, but they've been winning and they've been handicapped accordingly. This lad, he's been running out of his skin, trying to do the impossible, not quite lasting home. So back down over the, the long sprint, I think it will suit him. As, um, as the boys used to say, it's that intermediate distance. You're like the 800 metres in athletics, got to be prepared to run ugly. There we are. Then, fingers crossed, Lion Tower can boost the betting bank at a Royal Ascot next week. And obviously, we'll be there. Other than chatting with me for a few days, of course, what else are you most looking forward to at Royal Ascot? Um, I think uh, the the crowds being back is going to be fantastic. Um, if I'm looking for an explosive performance, I think that Golden Pal will probably try and run a hole in the wind up the straight there. He was beaten by the Learjet. He bombed out badly when he came over and ran um, at York, obviously. But um, I think he's better than that. They've got the American rider coming over. So, uh, yeah, Irad Ortiz, I think, will be off and gone in the early part of the week. Golden Powell could be pretty spectacular. Yeah, he certainly could. Like to Bayid Karibas and Golden Pal in the opening day. It could be a bad start to the week for the bookies. Watch this space, though. Hopefully, Lion Tower, though, uh, can get the job done on Saturday for Jason and give us a few quid in our pocket ahead of Royal Ascot. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, have some winners this weekend ahead of the big Raw meeting next week, wherever you're back in. Best of luck.